Summary of Educated by Tara Westover. In her memoir, Educated, Tara Westover tells the story of her journey from rural Idaho to the PhD program at Cambridge University. Along the way, she fights against her family's strict, isolationist religious beliefs and fights for an education. Along the way, she learns that being educated means learning much more about the world than what's in books. Tara grew up in a rural Idaho county at the foot of a mountain called Bucks Peak. Her controlling father, Jean, was a charismatic but paranoid and delusional man who thought the U.S. government was poisoning and corrupting its citizens through godless education, satanic medical practices, and surveillance methods that were meant to take away everyone's freedom. Jean lived a self-sufficient, survivalist life. He put his kids to work in his scrapyard when they were young and saved up goods for the days of abomination, which he always thought were just around the corner. Jean isolated his family and wouldn't let them get medical help in an emergency or learn anything other than the Bible and how to live on the hard mountain. As a result, many terrible and crippling accidents happened to the Westover family. Faye, Tara's mom, had brain damage from a car accident that was never fixed. Because of this, she got bad headaches and lost her memory. To feel better, she turned to her own fantasies. She thought that through a finger movement called muscle testing, she could tell if someone was sick or well and get answers to hard questions straight from God. Faye started a business selling essential oils, which soon took off not just locally but all over the country. It made the family a lot of money, which they used to keep getting ready for the end of the world. Tara worked in her father's scrapyard when she was young, but she wanted to be like the other kids in town and have a normal life. She took music lessons and dance classes, but Jean pulled her out of dance when he thought the recital costumes were whorish. The costumes were long, knee-length sweatshirts that were picked just for Tara. She made a lot of friends through community theater, including Charles, who was her first crush. She also got to know her bigger brother Sean better, who also liked to act in plays and hang out downtown. As Sean got older, though, he started stalking and bothering the girls he met and dated through the theater. Soon, he turned his rage on Tara. Sean always said that the violent physical and emotional attacks he did to Tara were just for fun, and their pattern of abuse and making up went out of hand for many years. When Sean had a series of accidents at work that left him with permanent brain damage, Tara blamed his growing violence and short temper on his pain. However, she started to realize that the only way to get away from her stifling and dangerous family was to go to college. With the help of her brother Tyler, who had already left home and worked hard enough to get into college, Tara studied for the ACT, applied to Brigham Young University, and was accepted, even though she had never been in a classroom before. At BYU, Tara was scared of her peers and the Gentiles, non-Mormons or casual Mormons, who were all around her. When an early lecturer used the word Holocaust, Tara raised her hand to ask what it meant. When her peers said they were disgusted, Tara looked up the word on a computer in the library. When she saw the destruction, violence, and sadness of the Holocaust and how little she knew about the genocide, she realized how little she knew about the world around her. During her first few years of college, Tara found it hard to balance the pull to go home to her family with her growing understanding of the world and growing doubts about Mormonism. Tara has to deal with the violence and shame of Sean's attacks, her father's rambling rants, and her mother's lack of interest when she goes home for the summer or the holidays. The emotional tug-of-war she plays with her family over the years makes her emotionally distant and sick, but with the help of her new friends, church community, and teachers, she realizes that she must make her own decisions and be in charge of her own life. When Tara's father gets badly burned in an accident on the mountain, which is similar to a burn injury Tara's brother Luke got a long time ago, she sees for the first time how her family keeps putting itself through violence and suffering for no reason other than their crazy beliefs. When Tara is given the chance to apply to a study abroad program at the well-known Cambridge University, she takes it, even though she is worried about being far away from her family. Tara feels insecure and unworthy at Cambridge, but her teachers, who are impressed by her sponge-like brain and confused by the fact that she has never been to school, are eager to support her and tell her to believe in herself. After coming back to America, 
Tara still doesn't know where she fits in the Mormon church or in her own family. She knows that her parents' old-fashioned ideas, terrible racism, and crazy conspiracy theories will never change, so she goes to Cambridge University to get a PhD. There, she continues to grow as a person and learn how to make decisions for herself. For the first time in her life, she gets immunizations and vaccinations after not getting them for 20-something years, and she learns feminism for the first time. Every time she goes home to Buck's Peak for Christmas or a holiday, she sees Sean beat up his young wife Emily, Jean and Faye get caught up in their booming oil business, which Tara knows is built on fraud and delusion, and her sister Audrey suffer in silence, Sean also beat up Audrey. Tara and Audrey talk about working together to finally tell their families the truth about their lives. But when contact breaks down, loyalties change, and Audrey is threatened with being kicked out of the family, she shuts down and stops talking to Tara, leaving Tara alone against her family. Sean tells Tara that he wants to kill Audrey because she said bad things about him. Tara finally talks to her parents about it, but they want proof. When Tara can't give them any, they call Sean over to talk things out. Sean threatens Tara with a bloody knife. Tara runs to the toilet and scolds herself for trying to stand up to Sean in the first place. She takes back everything she said about him and goes back to Cambridge, where she starts to have nightmares, anxiety, and sadness. Sean calls to threaten her and says he'll send assassins to take care of her in England. When Tara tells her parents what's going on, they don't stand up for her and even say Sean is justified in trying to protect his family from Tara's hate and lies. As Tara's life starts to go downhill and she starts to doubt her own memories and sanity because of how her family manipulates and gaslights her, she takes a fellowship at Harvard, but she can't really enjoy it. When Tara is at Harvard, her parents come to see her and try to reconvert her. Dad gives Tara his approval and tells her that she can come home if she takes back everything she's said and done to tear the family apart. Tara turns down her father's offer, but after her parents leave and her mental health continues to get worse, she books a trip home to Idaho, eager to reconnect. When she gets there, she finds texts on her mother's computer that call Tara a liar and a fraud. She knows that she is not really welcome because of this. She leaves quickly and says she will come back, but she knows she might never see her parents again. Now that her time at Harvard is over and she is back at Cambridge, Tara is struggling and risks failing her PhD. She stays in her room all day and watches TV, ignoring her friends and teachers who try to talk to her. When Tara's brother Tyler sends her an email saying he knows what's going on, fully supports her, and is cutting himself off from their parents because of it, Tara feels a rush of love and happiness, which gives her the strength to start therapy and finish her PhD. Tara is proud and truly happy for the first time in a long time after she gets her degree and moves to London with her loyal boyfriend Drew. She knows she needs to make one last trip to Buck's Peak to reclaim her own past, though. When Tara goes to Buck's Peak for her grandmother's funeral, she meets her mother's sisters she hasn't seen in a long time and gets comfort from their love and support. She sees her whole family at church, but most of them don't even look in her direction. Tara sits with her brothers Tyler and Richard. They are the only ones in the Westover family who have decided to go to school. The rest of the family lives on the other side of a huge chasm. In the last pages of the book, Tara says that she still sometimes feels like she doesn't deserve her education or like she's a fraud for wanting to get one. She worries that she'll always be the little girl in men's jeans working in the scrapyard on Buck's Peak. At the same time, she has found comfort in the fact that she knows learning is a lifelong process. Her learning has been to accept that change, betrayal, and transformation are painful but necessary parts of every person's life. About the author Tara Westover was born in a small town in rural Idaho to fundamentalist Mormon parents. As a child and teen, she worked in her father's scrapyard, helped her mother make and bless herbal tinctures, and went to a small, faithful neighborhood church. Tara's parents were skeptical of public education, medical institutions like hospitals and clinics, and the role of the U.S. government in the lives of its citizens in general. They homeschooled their children and treated even major injuries with herbal tinctures. 
There was physical and emotional violence in the Westover home, as well as a number of traumatic accidents that hurt the health and well-being of many members of Tara's large family. As Tara got older, she started to wonder about the world outside of her small town and how school could help her. In defiance of her parents' wishes, she applied to and attended Brigham Young University, a Mormon college in Utah. She then went on to study at Cambridge University and accept a grant at Harvard. As Tara went back and forth between the new world her education opened up to her and the dark hole of her abusive, delusional family, she fell into a deep sadness and had to make a choice that would change the course of her life forever. The unique story of Tara Westover has captured readers all over the United States and the world. Her 2018 book, Educated, has topped the New York Times bestseller list and has been nominated for awards by the National Books Critics Circle and PN slash America. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.